It is 8 o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is another DJ roundtable show with a lot of great DJs. And as always, we have uh, some DJs coming in and out. And we got a few DJs running late. Uh, got a couple of DJs out doing DJ stuff or family stuff. So as always, we thank them for coming in tonight. Uh, we should have a pretty good crowd tonight. Uh uh, had one come in and bounce out for really quick. Hopefully he had probably some internet problems. Uh, but we have a few more coming in, and they'll be here shortly. As soon as they are here, you will see them pop in. Uh, with everything going on, make sure that you do me a couple things. First thing first, here on Twitch, please don't be afraid to... I got to pop this out. I forgot to pop up my little screen. Don't be afraid to... Uh... Go into chat and say hi and talk and whatever you want to do, ask questions. Uh, questions are always grateful in the uh, in the chat. I always love that. And then uh, make sure that on here on Twitch you follow the channel because there's always stuff going on here. The show is always live here on Twitch. Uh, you know, we record it here on, on Twitch and then we play it back on YouTube. And that is my big monster that I have to deal with. And in the hard part with YouTube, which I have a lot of YouTube guys here, YouTube algorithm kind of stinks. And I need your help. If you subscribe to the channel, you are signaling to YouTube that we're actually, this is a good channel, a good show to watch. It also helps me get, you know, other guests on and so forth and so on. Plus also that smash the like button and sharing with other DJs is really important. The bell icon alerts you when we go with a new episode, which I try to make sure I have them on Mondays at 12 noon. And that's always the fun part, especially right now as busy. I have been with some double uh, booked weekends. It's been very, very hard, but I'm getting those videos out still for you guys. And I hope you're enjoying yourself. If you're new to the channel, thank you for coming by. Thank you for stopping by. I can't do this without you watching the show. And I want to thank to all the DJs who are here watching the show, as well as all the DJs in the show. It's greatly appreciated. And one DJ just texted me and said he's having some audio issues. He'll be back shortly. So, uh, you know, it happens. No big deal. We have a lot of technology going on here. Uh, we kind of have a, a technology guru, Chris, here. Uh, Chris is uh, Chris Disk up in uh, New York. Uh, so we have Cool Thing, a.k.a. Hunter in South Carolina. North Carolina is still represented here, but um, Jeff is on a little, uh, he's got stuff going on with the family, with sports and stuff. So he'll be off the next couple episodes. We got DJ Brentley in Wisconsin. We got Dwayne over there in beautiful Ohio. And then coming on the West Coast, we have Matt DJ Salsis. He is sitting there jamming out there in SoCal, uh, soaking up that beautiful California sun, sitting on the beach, drinking margaritas or whatever they drink in California, uh, pina coladas. That, oh, that's that is pina coladas? Yeah, maybe. Espresso martinis. Espresso, espresso martinis. See, there you go. Uh, you know, when you have that kind of fun stuff out there, sitting next to glamorous uh, models and uh, people of the stage and film and TV, I guess you we hang out with them and rub our arms with Arnold Schwarzenegger and all the fun people out there. You can drink uh, espresso martinis. Uh, us here in the Midwest, here, it's me in Chicago. Uh, yeah, there's some celebrities here, but the thing is, I don't get to rub shoulders with them like uh, Matt gets to do. With that said, let's start the show. And you have to excuse me, I'm three weeks in and dealing with allergies, so you'll hear me coughing throughout the night. I apologize in advance. <coughs> And trust me, it's been driving me nuts. It, it's it been driving me nuts all weekend. It's just, I, I love fall, but this is why the only part I hate is a cough. So it is uh, one of the things that, um, the fun stuff that's going on here. I want to talk to you guys, we were talking a little before we came in here, about music and about remixes a little bit on stuff. And we are talking about a few different songs before we came in. And I wanted to see where people get their remixes from, where, where, where do they look for them? What, what pools do they go to 
that they get or where do they find the people? And do they reach out sometimes to the DJs and, hey, do you have a new cool remix on this or a cool remix on that that I might be able to get? And that's the questions that, you know, it's always great to know um, if uh, if you're doing something, what is happening, what's transpiring, and so forth and so on. The big thing with, with remixes is that you want to make sure it sounds right. You want to make sure it's high audio quality, but also... Are you getting something that the original artist is getting credit for and not just someone that decides to take it and remix it in their basement and, you know, they put it out there and they're making money, but the original artist is not. So that's another thing you want to always want to pay attention. Who is getting money? Is it from a legitimate source or is it from, you know, a darker source that is not giving the money on to the actual original artist? And that's one of the things you want to look out for. But I'm going to start with a cool thing here who uh, always uh, has uh, great music on the beach there in South Carolina. How and where and when do you look for remixes on songs? Well, I actually have two record pools that I go to. I go to BPM Supreme, and I also go to the... It's uh, This one's not really a popular one. It's called My MP3 Pool, and they have tons of like re-drums and remixes and all that stuff. I mostly download the clean version since I'm mostly a DJ for kids and families and yeah, it's that's where I get my music from. Do you find it hard to find uh, remixes or how how do you nope. keep up on popular songs? How do you know like what's a popular song? Well, I don't really keep up with popular songs. I'm mostly old school. I like 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and 2000s. Anything after that I'm not really familiar with. I'm getting to that age where I'm going to be becoming less familiar with new songs. But I do use like streaming services and stuff like Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal. I also go on TikTok. And you do anything else? Do you look for, do you get a list from anywhere? No. Okay. Uh, one list that I like to look at is actually from Disc Jockey News. You want to get on their news um, emailing list. They will send out weekly the top songs off of TikTok, which if you're looking for hot songs, especially if you're in a market that you want to go after school dances and stuff like that, you want to know what's popular. That is one of the many things you could do. Uh, Mr. John Young over at Disc Jockey News over there, uh, great, great, great guy, as well as I run over there. And they, uh, uh, Mr. Young makes a list every week of uh, top songs. I get to email, I go through it and read it and stuff like that. Great information to have from Disc Jockey News, and it's it's it, it doesn't cost much to do. You give a donation, you get help them out, with, uh, you know, with stuff, and they 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 do all the stuff for for next to nothing. Um, it is a, a great great service to get and a great service to have, and love seeing that. And as well as uh, again, they're great people over there. Uh, Chris, um, I'll ask you. Since uh, I know you do a lot of the phone parties and stuff like that, where where do you get uh, remixes and stuff like that from? I mostly get my music from promo only still. So as for the remixes, I uh, usually uh, ask a couple of bodies what versions they're playing and uh, find out what they get, and I uh, try to find what service is going to offer them. So I'll try to find another service like you know BPM Supreme, Beatport, uh, Title, if they have them, if I can download them or not. I don't really download too too much of that, but I stick with all the radio stuff based on, you know, who I'm playing for. And that that's an important thing is that know your audience and who you're playing for, what you're doing, and it, it, this is not a end all be all saying hey you have to do this you have to do that. It's more or less give you ideas and thoughts. Maybe it's a different pool that you never heard of before. Um, I use promo only personally. Um, I also use Extendemix too. Extendemix is where I get my music videos from. And they have a lot of re, uh, re-edits, and they have remixes out there, too. So I will play uh, a video, even though I may have a screen in front of me, a, a TV screen in front of the booth. I'll still do a music video, a little bit of entertainment for myself to watch, because it's something kind of cool watching the music videos on a little screen. But the thing is that also, you know, again, you get some really good uh, remixes and some re-edits on songs or re-drums that uh, can really help out uh, make a song a little better, especially like, uh, you know, Flowers. Uh, the original Flowers is not bad, but kind of doesn't have a hit, but the remixes, uh, a lot of remixes, the beats are up there 
much, much better than the original flowers from Miley Cyrus. And I like playing those more than the original flowers. And people still sing it, but I, I always try to make sure it's not too crazy of a redone or a remix because you get too far out there. People don't recognize it and they don't think it's a totally different song then. So I wanted to go to uh, DJ Brantley over there in, Calif in California, in in Wisconsin. I wish. Yeah, well, you're kind of like you're kind of the California Midwest, especially with all the crazies going on there in Lacrosse. And again, Code oh, yeah. Blue Cam. If you haven't subscribed to that yet, please uh, subscribe to Code Blue Cam on YouTube and keep an eye out for Lacrosse videos. It's always fun to watch that. Uh, Brantley lives lives there and has to deal with those kind of people every day. Which I think they're worse than Florida man, but uh, where where do you get your uh, remixes and what do you look for? Well, I I get my my music from all over the map. I mean, legitimately. And I, when you were saying this, I started actually writing down my main pools, and uh, the top ones being Club Killers, and another and hand in hand with Club Killers Patreon, because. All the Club Killers DJs do have their Patreon accounts, and you can download their monthly packs, like even Steve, DeVille, and a few others that I'm not aren't you know coming off the top of my head. But you can get those packs right off the site. But when it comes to pools, like Club Killers is probably one of the top ones I go to. DJ City comes in right around number two or three. Because I drop a lot of house and EDM, FRP is one of my favorite ones, franchise record pool. And it's because of how much house they actually have. Um, then there's a couple minor pools, uh, Barbangers, Correcto, and Bezo, where they all, and doing the damage, those are all very boutique -y kind of pools where doing the damage is definitely centered around older re at, uh, remixes of currents of, you know, nowadays. Whereas like Bezo, Barbangers, Barbangers has some older tracks, but we'll always have a couple new tracks as well. Bezo is definitely a little more geared towards newer stuff with some older focus in there. But then I'm like, I'm into Crooklyn Clan. And those are the ones I'll mainly get for more remixes, the whole nine yards. When it comes to getting my current charts, definitely BPM Supreme. Definitely, um, what do you call it? Heavy Hits are two of my favorites that I get most of my current charts from. And I'm, it's not beyond me or above me. Where if a song's come out and our pools don't have it yet, yeah, I'll go to iTunes and grab it immediately. Like the day um, the John Summit remix of Gas Pedal came out. I'd heard it and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm dropping that tonight. None of the pools had it, so I just grabbed it from iTunes, spent the dollar twenty nine, and yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it was a very worthwhile dollar twenty nine to you know pay for because it just it was like one of the top bangers of the night in my book that night. You needed it. But oh yeah. But when you say, like, you know, how, you know, when you're looking for a certain remix of the flowers or stuff, every one of us is looking for a certain sound, so to speak, and the remix that fits what we're doing. I used to be, like, a huge, huge fan of the Pete Down remixes and still am for a certain portion of, like, wedding music because they're just a little bit souped up, but they don't go over the top with it. So in my wedding crate, you will see a lot of Pete Down. You'll see some DeVille stuff. You'll definitely see a lot of even Steve remix stuff. And there's a few others, but those are like the main three culprits. Granted, definitely all out of club killers. But my wedding, and then like for the club stuff, I definitely look for a lot like we were talking about earlier, where I've got the bigger drops, you know, like the Melbourne banger drops, a little bit more bass house heavy and things like that for my club sets. And that's when, like, FRP, IDJ, uh, the IDJ pool, or is it DJ pool it is, uh, and FRP really come into play with Club Killers. Because that will get me a huge variety of dance music. And one thing I tell everyone who, at, like, asks me where I'm getting my music, Mike, don't just lock yourself into any one pool. There are so many pools out there, in addition to, like, Hyped It, Rhett, and the other uh, SoundCloud. Download from all of them. Use different remix from different remixes from different DJs, so you're not sounding like every other DJ who only DJs from Club Killers or BPM. Get a wide variety of stuff to add a certain texture and flavor, so to speak, to what you're producing with your sets. And that's why, I mean, 
I will do all my music downloads Sunday night as soon as my kid goes to sleep for an entire week from all my pools. And then Monday, Tuesday night, screens. And I won't listen to them when I'm downloading them. I'll just look below and download almost everything that comes up and then screen them the next day. Once I And then I'll screen them all. So by Wednesday, I'm at my deck marking my cue points and getting them prepped to play. But I'm super over the top of my music collection because I don't want to sound like any every other DJ that's out there. Now, how do you uh, separate the uh, pools that are legitimate licensed by the uh, original artists versus the pools that are not? At this point, I just don't make a differentiate. I can't. And there's not here promo only everybody swears by it. And I hate to say this or talk badly, but they don't have enough in the remix scope. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to start sitting, you know, oh, great. The new Post Malone song's out. Well, I need to go into production and, you know, I, you know, pop Ableton open and do all this work to get a great drop. I don't have the time for that anymore. I really don't. And I hate to say it that. They do have a, or I don't hate to say, they have a good collection of music, but not enough that someone like myself or Matt, for example, because you do more EDM-based weddings, him and I couldn't survive out of using that pool. It would be detrimental to business. And I know, for example, BPM is licensed again, I believe, because Sony pulled all their catalog and there was licensing issues with each different vendor, but I believe BPM's got it back and a couple others. But I'm, I don't want to limit myself either. And that's what keeps every DJ unique is being able to produce our nights the way we want them or the way we feel they should be. And hopefully I'm not, and actually you know, knowing you're not copying somebody else. Because I get the opportunity to go sit in the booth with a lot of the DJs I book at Legends after my weddings. And I can see we're kind of playing some of the same material, but every one of us is using a different, different remix. Like, Every DJ I've run into in the lacrosse or in my area of the woods, like, uh, gimme, gimme, gimme. Every one of us is using a different version, but we're all playing. So at that point, I don't want, want to be like any of them. I want my own unique kind of thing going on. And if I have to download, if they're not legal, that's, I'm paying for it. That's the best I'm going to get out of it. Okay. Matt, what about you? What, what about, where do you, uh, where do you grind for your music? What uh, pools? Where do you get your remixes? Uh, I'm a DMS uh, loyalist. I only use direct music service. That's it. Um, I've tried a bunch of the other ones. Didn't like any of them. Um, Zip DJ is terrible. Uh, some of the worst music out of any of them, I think. Um, Club but Killers. Zip, you really got to dig. Huh? You really got to was zip dj you have yeah, to dig really do i, I think i, I, I keep getting stuff for zip dj i keep getting emails for zip yeah. dj I, i've never here's, really looked at it or anything like that but i get tons of emails like, for them here's why i like dms they don't have they don't just throw hundreds of songs every day in there there's maybe 20 releases 30 releases a day if that you can preview all of them super easily it's got a great interface you could sort it well the catalog doesn't have a limit like promo only like, you can always find old stuff. Yeah, it's a little limited sometimes, but that's when I just rip stuff off of YouTube. Uh, I got a great MP3 ripper. Uh, legal, sure. Um, just hit me up. Um, and But I, I find a lot of remixes, like, on Sirius XM. I listen to a lot of XM, so I find remixes there, look for them in online, wherever. Um, sometimes they're on SoundCloud, sometimes not. I just, I used to have BBM Supreme. I don't like how they changed it after they updated it and so i stopped using it uh my other thing is like i watch everybody's gig logs and very rarely do i hear a remix on there that i'm like oh that's dope where'd you get it uh because if i did then i would sign up for that pool but uh i don't so uh i have a couple of club killers ones that somebody's sent me um but there is also unofficially a record pool subscription that you can buy that gives you access to every single one uh, and I think I'm going to sign up for that. The problem is you can't preview the tracks. You have to download each one. So if they suck, then you just, you know, wasted 10 megabytes of space that you have to delete. So I like DMS though. Um, I try to stick not to the originals. Um, I like to, the way I DJ is, and the way that I've always done this, 
people like to hear the songs they know as close to the original version as they know, and the remix should only enhance that. If you have a remix, like all these, we'll call them terrible DJs that play this weird cha-cha slide edit where it's got the do-do-do-do, do-do-do-do, where it's like sped up and it just sounds terrible. Like, I don't know what you're doing. Like, that is not the actual cha-cha slide. Like, don't play a remix where people are like, what is this? And I do a lot of, not a lot, but I do a chunk of school dances. You can't play some foreign remix there. Like, they're not going to know it. Uh, they're not going to want it. They want to hear as close to the original. And same thing with weddings. Like, if it enhances it, like Taylor Swift remixes, where it's a big drop or, you know, Love Story turns from a slow song into like a hype EDM remix, but it's still got enough of the vocals to be where people sing it. That's the golden formula for me. So, um, yeah, but that's what I do. I was checking out Franchise Record Pool while you guys were talking, actually. Um, but again, like, they upload so much every day. And like, to me... That's overwhelming. I don't have time to spend 10, 12 hours looking through music every week. I spend my Tuesdays spent doing music. I spend, you know, eight to 10 hours building my timelines, downloading what I need to download. And then if there's stuff that's stored on my phone that I like have liked over the past week, I'll download it all then. But I just, you know, there's so much out there, like Brentley was saying, that it's just, I don't know. But I must be doing something right because I went to a Kygo concert on Thursday. And he played the same Gimme, Gimme, Gimme remix that I play. So, hey, you know, I've got good taste. It's the Sergeant Slick. I've got that one. That's the best one. I've got it. Best one. Uh, See, but, like, here, where I'm at, you know, that Sergeant Slick, I can't get – it doesn't have enough of a boom to it. Whereas huh. their Starjack Bass House remix, which is just all bump, bump, the entire song. That's when that's kind of where I've been, you know, looking for if I'm not doing a lot of heavy drops. Gotcha. But yeah, that's my, uh, I, I like DMS. Uh, I've been a long, long, long time subscriber. Um, they've got great edits. They've also got great. I don't really do, I don't do mashups. What I do is, um, what I also like to do is let's say there's a remix of the song. I'll do the first verse of the original version of the song and make my own cut where it goes into the remixed drop for the second part. That's that's the other golden ticket, because then you surprise them with that second drop. Uh, and then it's also, you know, there. Then I can then I could stop quick mixing so much, so to say. The uh, the, the couple of things in the chat here. Uh, my, DJ Mikey Mike from PA is in the house tonight. Good evening, all. Uh, DJ Adrian E also says hello, gents and ladies as well. I don't think you saw... Uh, uh, I don't think he saw Taylor on there. Um, and then, uh, let's see here. He said, uh, Mikey Mike said, uh, you, Matt, you're going to spend 47 cents more per gallon for gasoline. Uh, I know that uh, in California they have uh, uh, a refinery pulling out of there. Yeah, that's that's going to create your business costs right there. And, and just driving around, uh, unfortunately. It's already, $4. it's already $4 a gallon, whatever. Yeah, it just dropped down. I got a gas station by me that's... Uh, Two ninety nine a gallon, which is cheap for yeah. us. Yeah, we haven't seen a two in six, seven years, maybe. <laughs> California just, again, two ninety five, baby, out of Middletown. There you go. I know what's the end. I guess I gotta bug uh, Jordan and Taylor in a little bit and see uh, what they say. Um, Michael says, just uh, like the Kiss uh, rock and roll all night, and the Poison remake of it. One of the songs you guys were uh, talking about. Mike also says the market is being flooded. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of pools out there. But, you know, I, I want to support artists, and that's why I do a pools that uh, I know are giving money back to the artists because they're not making money on on promo only. I mean, they're making, a, they're making a few dollars on promo only, but they're not making money on streaming services like um, – uh, any streaming service you look at, doesn't matter if it's YouTube, doesn't matter if it's Amazon, doesn't matter what streaming service it is, they're not making money on Spotify and stuff like that. They make tens of pennies. And it's one of the things that um, I want to support the artists for their work and make sure they get as much money as possible. Um, and then Mike says, I'm grabbing a nice big bowl of butter pecan ice cream. Oh. All right. Question. Who here likes butter pecan ice cream? Raise your hand. Oh, me personally, I'm a bigger fan of mint chocolate chip. 
Yeah, there's much better ice cream than butter pecan. Have you? You guys don't have salt and straw, do you? No. Salt, no, salt and right straw now. is like world famous, like custom made ice cream that they have all Here, throughout California. I'll put it to you like level. this: Shoot, there's Ben and Jerry's has got to be uh, the price of gold. I'll eat it all. No, but this is this is think Ben and Jerry's, but think of it like small batch and like actual fresh baked cookies mixed in instead of like cookie. You mean twelve dollars like, a pint versus uh like eight dollars? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit much for uh six dollars milk with flavoring and then six and to eight dollars. Oh, it's like eight, seven dollars a scoop. Yeah. Seven a scoop. I I'll have to agree with you on that, Matt. Eating the worthwhile ice cream and stuff definitely rewarding because I was a dumbass who went to the Starbucks Reserve in Chicago over Christmas and spent fifty dollars on a pound of coffee. And yeah. honest to God, I hated the pound. I still drank mm -hmm. it, but it smelled good. It looked good. And the little sample I had in the store was great. As soon as I got it home, I'm like, no. And I'm wondering if they gave me the wrong beans. But, yeah. I, I will spend that kind of money on a good ice cream or a good coffee or something once in a blue moon. It, it's, it's, it's always funny way how you spend money on stuff. So I want to go over to Dwayne where he spends his money for pools. Where do you get your remixes from? What pool is your uh, fun playground to go in and look at music and uh, download uh, songs from, sir? Oh, well, I got um, a little bit of everything, but the the ones that you're talking about that's legit, I'll say I, I go to BPM Supreme, and then the second one would be Remix um, Planet. Um, The third one, which I don't know if it's totally legit, but I pay a monthly subscription to them, and it seemed like they got pretty much everything I have seen, like on X-Mix, and BPM so Supreme and all that. It seemed like this all right there. This one is called DJ Record Pools, I believe. It's called. Uh, that's it. Um, then after that, I would say I just start digging. I go to SoundCloud, go to YouTube, um, and then sometimes I even venture out to um, like Reverb Planet, um, Number One Music. Those kind of like the the ones where the wannabe rappers and singers post their stuff. Sometimes you can find good things there, and I'll just take it from there. And then lately, I've noticed that Spotify has been putting up different kind of versions other than the regular version. So I'll go there. If not, if there is um, one that I have to buy, I usually go to iTunes or Amazon. Okay. Same here. Same here. I actually download a lot from iTunes and Amazon. It really okay. helps fill in the gap. Okay. So I'm going to go to uh, Taylor and Jordan here, or Jordan and Taylor, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, where do you get your remixes from? Where What pools do you go to if someone wants, if you want a remix of a song? Where, where your fun playground is at? Um. Well... I use Tidal a lot. Well, I listen to Tidal actually, like every single day, um, as does Jordan. And that's how I listen to new music. Um, so then I'll get a lot of ideas from there. We've used BPM. Um, promo so, only. Promo only. Um, if sometimes I do rip stuff off YouTube that I can't find, but whatever too on that. Honestly, SoundCloud <laughs> has a lot of good stuff if you do your digging. Yeah, and, and there's certain DJs out there that will post like you know stuff to go look for. Um, I found a couple at Midwest. One of the DJs just kind of gave us all some links, but uh, some of my best remixes I would say were SoundCloud. Um, but yeah, I just I listen to my daily discovery on Title every day, first thing when I like getting ready, and uh, I find a lot of remixes that way. Okay, so those are a couple ones. Is there a secret place that uh, you like more than another, or is that you know your title is your like your number one place? I really like title just for daily listening. Um, a lot of times I will look for that remix, and it will be on like promo only if you scour for it or BPM. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't really like BPM. I haven't really used promo. I mean, I I mean I shouldn't say that. I guess I did get a lot of stuff off there, but I feel like 
they didn't have like a big selection maybe just maybe what i was looking for um i did find the silver package of promo only was a lot better with the remix stuff than the top 40 package obviously yeah, but uh the higher package you go the more stuff you get and yeah, it, it's, it's there like was more else. remixes in the top in the silver package than there was in the top forty. There's still remixes in the top forty though, um, but yeah, and I mean there was a lot of Aladdin stuff, but I don't really use too much of that. But some of those remixes are good, and, and that that's one of the things again you you have to I, you know, you'd want to have multiple you know lanes to look at for music and look at stuff and get your get your music. But also, you want to make sure that you know it, it, it's it's a good copy because sometimes some of those pools, you know, again, I know uh, Brentley like rattle off like twenty five different pools he deals with, and so you know sometimes I've seen pools that the audio quality eh, or they're really slow for download or they're really hard to search or you know you go type in a name of an artist you don't type it in exactly right it never comes up it, it, it's it's there's certain things that I like. Um, when you look for things, you get it. Uh, promo only is a push service, so they push every day. They have you know their songs you download on pool, uh, which I just download. I just download everything, and hard drive space is cheap. And getting a external hard drive, a uh, two terabyte external hard drive, and taking what's on my main hard drive here and backing up onto an external hard drive, I'll do that all day. You know, no problem. Uh, but it's always fun we're hearing where people get stuff from because there's there you shouldn't have just one lane of, of of source of source for this and having multiple lanes is important um i did really, forget to mention know, I, amazon I, too okay you know i actually have i actually have another outlet so i can get my music my physical cds i can rub them to my computer using an external disk drive here i can rep all the music from cds into my computer. Here with you. The DJ's been doing that for a long, long time, uh, taking music from CDs, uh, especially got older CD collection. And older. But one of the things, um, uh, Taylor and Jordan, what is your favorite ice cream? Since I... Uh, <laughs> said, uh, I like cookie dough. Okay, cookie dough. <laughs> uh, I just put everything in there. So I honestly like Oreo and cookie dough together, but Oh, actually scratch that. Have you <laughs> Dairy Queen has a frosted animal cookie blizzard. There's the pumpkin pie blizzard, which is pretty good. <laughs> um yeah. Wait, I got three. Don't, you guys don't go to Overwatch? It's a seasonal. Wait, Dairy <laughs> Queen Dairy Queen is still in business? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have one near yeah. me. There's there's a lot of businesses outside of California. Yeah. No, we, there's a lot of us not live in a you small don't live town. In a small town. We we <laughs> have the only thing. That's the only thing we have. We have we have legitimate ice cream shops that are that are small. I don't know. We we have really good ice cream here in California. There's we like used to have different friendlies places. here in New York. Your, uh, yeah, Jordan friendly. and Taylor, you guys you guys go to Overwise too, right? You know what? I'm on a budget. Well, Dairy Queen ain't even an ice cream either. Overwise near us, but I what? yeah, there is. There is a crowd point, isn't there? By three monkeys. Oh, that's Cold Stone. Cold Stone. Cold Stone. Cold Stone. Cold Stone. Oh, yeah. I thought, I thought. Oh man. Cold yeah. Stone. See, I, 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 I like yeah. my Oprah, I like Overwise. Plus, also they have uh, that There's burger no joint. Great hamburgers. Yeah. There's a lot more Overwises in uh, Illinois. Oh yeah, because yeah, well, they're based in Aurora. Yeah. So yeah, oh, but yeah. I, I, there, there, there's, I think there's some in Northwest Indiana. I'm know. sure there is. I feel like I've seen one driving around. <laughs> I, I I love their ice cream. They have this uh, dark chocolate and caramel one. Oh God, I, I that's what I like. You know, I like salt and caramel. Like I like chocolate. So you know, fat guy's yeah, dream. We have a place. There's a place here called Wanderlust, and it's like Filipino inspired ice cream. So they have like an ube chocolate malted crunch. That's like, I mean, we have a lot of Asians in Southern California, so like they they started going into the ice cream realm. So there's there's a lot of they're they're huge at weddings too. They have that. There's also like a we have uh, McConnell's fresh ice cream. There's there's a bunch of different. I don't know. Ice cream is is a thing here because it's. Hot I had and... I had a wedding, uh, my New Year's Eve wedding from 2022 to 2023. Uh, they had Cold Stone, 
at the Ooh. ice cream. They, they did little little cups already pre-filled <laughs> with they had, uh, chocolate, vanilla, and it was uh, vanilla with uh, f- like fudge in it. And then they had the toppings. So they had it was preset in little cups from Cold Stone. It was like a scoop in each cup. And they had a freezer. You just go take what you want, take the cover off, and then doctor up with whatever you want. Caramel, hot fudge. His whole that's entire cool. like Sunday bar. Uh, the doctor it up with, and there you go. But that's not the only one I've done ice cream with. Um, there's been a few weddings I've had ice cream. One of the ones um, they had, uh, it was, I'm trying to think now, uh, it was out west. They had a local uh, premier ice cream company. They are actually scooping and making sundaes and stuff like that there. that was I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, but, the, you know, I saw Mr. Dixon. He had Dairy Queen. Um, Brentley, what about you? What's, what's your... Uh, place for ice cream honestly i do love cold stone and one thing living in lacrosse because we have a very big mung populace there's an asian style like on the cold plate ice cream you can get fresh in the summer at a couple places where they make it right in front of you cream sugar the whole nine yards on a freezing like ice something or another Stuff is amazing. But if I have to go to a store, definitely Cold Stone. However, I do miss 31 Flavors and their mint chocolate chip. Because there is not a 31 Flavors Baskin anywhere Browns. near the cross. Oh, wow. Really? The closest, the closest 31 Flavors to me is in Wisconsin Dells down the street from the Kalahari. Closest one. Oh, wow. Yeah, the uh, Tracy Tracy Very loves uh, mint, mint chocolate chips. So if you guys ever want to make Tracy happy, give her 31 flavors, mint chocolate chip. She's happy. Or her second favorite, I think, would be the chocolate peanut butter from it there. Not as much as she likes the mint chocolate chip. That's her favorite. Um, Adrian says, BPM Supreme, Hype Edit, Amazon, and Beatport for music. And then yeah. for ice cream, pistachio from anywhere pretty much. So pistachio <laughs> ice cream from anywhere pretty much. Lots of pistachio flavor. Any Chinese restaurant that still gives you a fortune cookie and you get that uh, <laughs> mint pistachio ice cream. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, he brought up beet port, and I will say that for a lot of my long – like, I don't quick mix everything. but And there are some house tracks, like, early in the night at Legends, if I'm, you know, setting a little groove or having a little fun. I'll let things roll for a few minutes, and I do get a lot of my down, like down tempo, not drop house kind of stuff, definitely from Beatport. And they yep. do have some great, great compilations. Like they do their monthly review, so you can get the best of melodic Thank house, the best songs. of EDM out of them. And then I'm now being, you know, October. I can't wait until their end of the year, so you can get all their picks of the year's bangers in every one of those genres. And that that's the important stuff is, you know, again, getting good music and stuff and knowing where to get stuff. Um, Mike said, uh, guys have to check out Hillside Farms. It's a local ice cream parlor here. Uh, they get all their ice cream is made from their own cows. That is cool. Oberweiss here, they have multiple stores. Their Uber premium ice cream, they actually have uh, in there to dairy stores. So they have milk, cream butter eggs uh so it, it's not a convenience store but they have those items there but they actually have milk in glass bottles they're half gallons each they're not cheap they do do home delivery so they do have milkmen and then they have their premium ice creams that they will deliver uh to you as well but they have these stores you go in there it's an old time uh ice cream parlor which you know again it, it's I'm a fat they ice deliver cream. blocks of ice too there buddy um, no, no, no. The refrigeration has taken care of that. But they also have in some of their locations, they grew the location. They have a, uh, that burger joint, which they have, uh, like premium burgers. And then they have, a, I can't remember the pizza place they have, but they have three restaurants on the same. I didn't go right through one drive through and get anything from all three of them. Uh, of course you want to order the pizza beforehand because you've been waiting at drive through for a long time. For a pizza. Uh, he and Mike says, same here at Hillside Farms. Um, one other thing also, um, I want to get your guys' um, thought on things and where you guys get stuff. This is a little secret stuff. Um, Micro Center, I don't know if you guys can see that too well there. Micro Center. Um, 
Yeah, Amazon starts. carries Micro Center stuff, so it's a little easier to get it off of Amazon a little quicker than going down to the Micro Center store. Micro Center has stores throughout the U.S. Uh, they're a computer like warehouse, uh, kind of like figure New Egg, but they actually have a store. Kind of almost like a not quite a Radio Shack level of stuff, but they have a lot of electronic stuff. But they have uh, their own thumb drives, and I swear by them, as well as they have their own SD cards. Uh, you can find them on Amazon, the SD cards and the thumb drives. Um, I really do like their product, uh, and they they guarantee it. Uh, if you have a problem, take it in there. Matt has his own. Uh, they don't where, have custom ones. Where do you get yours from? Uh, I can't reveal my sources. Come on now. He gets that from Amazon, and he puts his own. Uh, no, I get a. I, you got yourself a cricket cutter. I know you do. I, I got an Alibaba connection uh, where I get there those from, and they're about. I order them a hundred at a time, and they're about a dollar eighty a piece, and they're sixteen gigs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hit me up. I'll get you the link. There, there you go. Look, again, if you're looking to want to get your own personal thumb drives, hit Matt up. He will send you the link, and you can get a hold of the person there. Uh, Chris, where do you get your uh, little thumb drives and stuff like that from? Your memory well, I'll cards? I get them directly from some of the manufacturers, like SanDisk. You know, oh, yeah. Know they definitely a premium, but, you know, uh, they definitely have some decent. But as for higher quality ones, I used to use a company called Patriot. They also make SSDs. Uh, my current favorite storage media type is the uh, NVMe drives from A-Data, the Legend series, 900, uh, 960. You get some nice big storage, very fast, reliable, uh, and just buy, buy your own enclosure. You know, why why spend these uh, 10 $20 when you can spend 60 80 bucks and get something 5 to 10 times the storage, you know? And it's still compact, you know? You break a flash drive, you're screwed, but if you break an SD, it says D dongle, all you do is replace it, pop it out, pop it in a new enclosure, and you're done. You don't lose your data that way unless you physically burn out that drive. Uh, you know, so everyone's uh, buying these 32 gig, 64 gig flash drives. I'm like, uh, you're playing with fire. Yeah. I will tell you a cool thing I got also got from Micro Center. This is a, I don't know, the light going to hit it. Uh, I don't know if you can see or not. It's clear on both ends. It is a USB C on one end. USB A on the other end, okay. 256 gig thumb drive. I have a couple of these. Um, and the nice thing with that is that storing a few songs on there or storing some pictures on there, especially for a wedding show, you know, you can plug it into, uh, you know, whatever you want to use your media player for and show uh, images on a screen. It's a great thing to have. Uh, Jordan Taylor, where do you, uh, what, what, what do you use? I mainly keep most of my music right on the laptop, and then I back it up just on a Samsung portable hard drive. Hard and drive or SSD? SSD. There you go. So, but uh, yeah, it's not an enclosure. I don't. But that he makes a solid point. It is not a bad That's idea good. just to get an NVMe enclosure. It's going to be a lot faster, and yeah, if you break the enclosure. Just switch out your NVMe. Pop it out, put it in another one. Exactly. And you I, have many dongles that you need. OG hard drives over anything. I hate But uh, For like pictures and like monograms and stuff, I just use the cheap. I have a bunch yeah. of the cheap ones. If that's all you're using it for, just to access that type of stuff, putting in a mod, uh, yeah. a simple media player to a projector, absolutely. Go ahead, use them all day. But just don't rely on it. Rely oh, on yeah, it like, like, in a controller. Like Go ahead, buddy. Like like these, I use these for for the uh, I have the uh, I have a couple phones. So if you mm -hmm. see my pictures on social media, I have pictures of the phone. So people would leave the uh, the voicemails for the couple, mm -hmm. and I have a few of these SD cards because I keep the older SD cards after they do it. I keep it for yep. a couple weeks, so mm -hmm. that way you know if they forget if they lose the thumb drive I gave them. I can make another copy and send them another thumb drive. So I tell them, you have two weeks. I'll hold for two weeks. I hold it longer than that just in case. But mm -hmm. uh, like this past weekend, we had you used the phone twice. Now, now I have two SD cards tied up. I still have two SD cards from the previous week tied up and two SD cards from the previous week before that tied up. So at six weddings, I allow SD cards. So I ordered extra SD cards. So for my next, this week, wedding this weekend, I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about, oh, man, uh, who do I uh, and they're not that expensive. Who do I race? 
Absolutely. They're not that expensive. Are the phones I mean, an extra option? Yes. And that, that's one of the things that, you know, it, it, storage is always important. Mr. Dixon, how do you, uh, a little extra storage here and there for like things here, songs or whatever, what, what do you usually use, thumb drives or SD cards or whatever? What uh, what brands do you deal with? Um, for my Insta360 camera, I use the little, the little micro um, SD cards, yeah. Cards, yep. But then I see uh, Micro Center got um, the five terabytes. That's a little under a hundred. So I picked that up. And but usually I have a bunch of um, flash drives for like little stuff. But my main music I just keep on my um, laptop, so I don't have to worry about putting any extra peripherals onto my computer and just back it up to a hard drive. Yeah, I think I talked about this before. Uh, this is the 16 gig uh, pack again off of Amazon, but it's Micro Center. Uh, it's your five or six 16 gig uh, thumb drives. This is what I use to put the music on for the couple. So each time a file goes out, um, and I'm this is from last this last weekend because I took the thumb drive I had, put the uh, the voicemails on there, and gave them the thumb drive with their music on here. So all their special songs, their special requests, first dance, da uh, last dance, daddy, daughter, mother, son. I always put one of these. This has their other own file on there. So I make a master file here, copy it onto a thumb drive. Thumb drive goes into a baggie. The baggie gets clipped to their paperwork. So I've, I've, you know, basically kind of a chain of custody kind of feel, deal with there. And this way I have a physical music right there. I plug it into the computer and, and you know, go through it and make sure it's right. And then when I go out to the, uh, the field, I have the thumb drive uh, with their music on it. And because with the, uh, the phone, um, giving it to them, they have all their special songs. So I had their still the master file here. It's copied onto that thumb drive. And that's what I use at the wedding is that, is that copy uh, for music. And that way also uh, it, it's kind of nice because I could put it on any computer. So if one computer dies, I can go to another computer in case something happens. And that's uh, why I use that. Uh, it's very, very easy to deal with. Uh, DJ Bradley for you, for, uh, for some storage, how do you, what do you use? Where do you get your uh, storage from? Well, I keep all my music on my laptops. Both my uh, laptops have two T hard drives. So, and honest to God, I've been doing it about once a month where on my backup laptop, I'll just erase it and export and put my, because I work off of one computer mainly when I'm, you know, sorting music and all that. So I'll erase the backup and just repopulate it with my current library about once a month. And honest to God's truth, I am looking at it right now. I don't use solid state hard drives because I've never really had the need for a hard drive to be that dependable for music necessarily. So I probably got about 30 different hard drives here with different variations of my library. Like four of them have everything master library, my backup library, like my master being what I'm using currently the backup, which is just like my old storage, which I've got three different 4T hard drives like that. When I go to clubs, I did buy, I can't, I think they're SanDisks or Samsung. I can't remember. It's one of the S's, but I've got, what is it? Four 64 gig uh, thumb drives. And I keep two of those in each one of my backpacks with the exact same music on them. So I have like my wedding hits on them, my top club crates, like, you know, dance club crate, my top college club crate, and I think a few other odds and ends that if I ever had gotten to a pickle, I could just shove that in somewhere. And also a couple of the clubs I'm at because they have CDJs, it's just really nice to have my life, what I need on two thumb drives. So I I just want to use the CDJs and not really plug in, I can. 99% of the time, yeah, I'm using my laptop. But if something, and it happened a couple of times where my old i9 couldn't handle working this, uh, the X, the XDJ, uh, the all in one thing. So I had to go and revert to using my two thumb drives. And that, that's, you know, it's always interesting where people, you know, what do you use for storage? Uh, DJ fire. Glad you're coming here. Last couple minutes. We're just talking really quickly about 
uh, storage, you know, where do you get uh, your storage, you know, um, as far as like SD card or a thumb drive or anything like that, uh, what, what do you get, what do you use? Do you, is there a brand that you like or a company you deal with, or you just get the, the cheapest stuff off of Amazon or what, what do you do? You're muted. Muted. You're muted. How about now? Yeah, we can hear you. Good. <laughs> it's a good thing I could hear y'all. I've been talking and no one would have heard me. You guys would have had the lip lip read. Um, I said I could be funny and be like uh, the storage I use is like the the ones down the road, the you know, storage units. I'm just kidding. Um, I have an external hard drive with a bunch of my music on it. It's a four terabyte solid state. So, uh, mm. of course, I'm always putting music on it because somebody will request something that I've never heard. Then after I play it, I'm like. That's kind of a catchy song. I'm going to add that into my um, music arsenal. So, <clears throat> but, I mean, there's music on my laptop, although my laptop's only got, what is it, 500 or a one terabyte? I can't remember. I think it's a one terabyte. So, yeah, it's a, it's a one terabyte. So I've got basically five terabytes of storage between the computer and the external. Um stuff so um, there's some songs i play directly from my music player thing in my deal like i've got some stuff that when i downloaded my um what do you call it um serato that it put on there like it put some stuff on there and then i've also put some stuff into the serato folder so i've got some different uh i guess matt would call them the horn and different sound effects that Matt uses and stuff. I've got some of that, and I've got some custom ones that I've had <clears throat> had made. So, but um, so yeah, I just use external hard drive. Um, I guess a thumb drive like uh, DJ Brantley uses is probably, I mean, nicer because it's smaller and compact. Um, and that's probably what a lot of people should go to now. Um, once I get my new DJ controller, which that's all you're going to find out, but I have a new DJ controller coming um, along with sound switch. I know there's people going to be like, oh, that's a waste of money, but yeah. I've, I love actually, so much. <laughs> I've actually got a guy that is a professor here at the college and he is a genius at lighting. Uh, the, the theater here that they have for the college just spent $16,000 on two moving heads. Two, and they weigh 125 pounds a piece. Wow! And they're all of three and a half, four feet tall. If you flip the head completely up or it's shooting up when it's sitting on the floor, it's all of three and a half feet tall. It's huge. Um, and they bought two of these, eight thousand dollars a piece. I was like, good night. What do you need sixteen thousand dollars worth of moving heads for? But and then they're getting ready to buy some other stuff too. But I told him about trying to do something different with my lighting other than sound active and all that stuff. And he's like, uh, well, have you ever heard of sound switch? And I said, yeah. He said, well, I could help you program all that. And I was like, Oh really? He's like, yeah. I was like, well then I'll get one coming. So I've got sound switch coming should be here Thursday. So sound switch is great, yeah, but it's a, subscription. Oh yeah. I love it's sound switch services. Yeah. Eventually. What was I'm that Chris? Sound switch is a monthly service. So if you're not paying for the monthly service, you can't really edit and make your scenes without even having their dongle or having their hardware. You know, right? So I bought, I bought the little what it said interface, which it was like twenty some dollars. Thirty bucks, I, yeah. Yeah, and then I got the actual control pad, so I didn't actually have to buy another laptop to run it. Which you can run it directly from a laptop, but I like the little controller. So it's been yeah. around three hundred, three hundred bucks. I think it was. I got the controller and the the deal and then i think we're going to set my lighting up and set up different shows and different colors and stuff so hopefully that will be coming soon because I've, I've i've got two proms booked for next year so um, then i'm booking a very very big wedding thursday so like so, a very big wedding so mikey mike is saying you could buy sound switch i guess a lifetime or you could pay monthly for subscription they give i guess they give two choices because uh, Mikey Mike's dealt with that. I know uh I know Brentley, he's done um 
he doesn't do sound switch, but he does through record uh, record box, uh, their uh, DMX software, and uh, he's very very happy with it. There, I'm what? happy with it. I mean, I've opted now because I got the Portmans and the blinder sticks and all that that they don't work. They, two of the fixture or one of the fixtures wasn't Matt programmed into record box. And this is when I actually finally discovered that I'm not as happy with record box sliding mode as I used to be. Mm. And I think there are some upgrades in 7.0, but I don't have a big enough pair to up, you know, get the new version of record box yet. Mm. But um, with record box lighting, if the fixture's not in the library, whereas in, I want to say record box five, you could make a fixture setting and six, you cannot. So the the apartments I got and the sticks, I can only use the circle lights in record box, not the sticks, even though they're on the same DMX channel. They in settings they don't work correctly. I have no clue why. So that's when I went out and got a Shobe a Shobe Obey forty, just because I wanted. You know, I put my up lights, the the Portman circle, the the towers, and realized how much more room I had to work with that. So there's a few more things I can probably put on there. And when it comes to it, the one thing I love the most about record box lighting was how well it controlled my moving heads on their scenes. So what I've come up with is if I have when I have uh, a couple of these weddings come next year that require moving heads in the whole show, I'm going to run the heads off of record box and then run the rest of my lighting show off of the obey. And so far, in theory, it all pans out right. And I actually have an experiment on some of it I have to do this week for a wedding I have next week. So I might just see how it all ties in together at once. Mm -hmm. yeah, record box light mode is a really great tool because you can map it in your controller. And it's one less piece of equipment and all that provides you have a flex 10. You can still map it in your controller, but if you don't have a flex 10, you need the RB DMX, the RB1 DMX box which is no longer in circulation. They don't make it anymore. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming they're going to come out with something that's record box DMX friendly, similar to sound switch or wolf mix that you have a control. You know, one of the things is like uh, on um, show on their uh, show express. I, I, I have that software. I, I use that software every so often, um, especially when, if I, I haven't used my moving heads this year, but I've used it with moving heads and, it's one of the things, again, you can edit, you can change things, you can add fixtures. That's a nice thing about it. And then I bought the two universe units. So it has two 512 uh, DMX uh, ports off the, uh, off the uh, uh, USB port. So it, it's one of the things that if you want to get into DMX, uh, you can get in very deeply, very quickly. And Show Express, um, as well as, you know, um, Recordbox and all these other softwares, it's, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but uh, again, uh, sound switch, uh, it, it's it's more of a, a easier way of doing it. it. Takes a lot of the guesswork out of you're not programming uh, that heavily. I know Matt does a lot of his own programming uh, with lighting because he, he wants to control it even more so. Sound switch, hey. sound switch is, is 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 easy. There's that AI software, the AI box that uh, you can go out and buy now that uh, does lighting too, and it's it's like okay. Um, but it's like anything else. Jordan and Taylor, what do you guys use? I use QLC Plus. It's a uh, open source. It's very similar to Show Express. And you just got to buy a universe to plug into it to, for it to work. Yeah, it works with any dongle. I have an Intec. Uh, well, I don't remember what that's called. Just the basic Intec Two, like the. Little black one. Uh, <laughs> Tech, Thirty-two, yeah. Controllers. Yeah, it's like it's like yours is like freestyler. Um, yes, very similar to freestyle. Open source. And then Dwayne, what about you? Freestyler, use? Show Express, they're all kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Dwayne, what are you using DMX? Um, yeah, I got Sound Switch. And so I we used got three the, people uh, here at Sound Switch. Yeah. Um, and again, I know uh, Nathan just said he ordered it, so. Hopefully he likes it. I know Mikey Mike's got it. He likes it. I know a few people got sound switch. They love it. Again, I'm not saying that one it. thing's better than another. You have to get what you like and what you enjoy. If you like sound switch, God bless. If you like something else, God bless. You have to get what you feel is best for you. I'm just giving options. I just want to hear what people use to give you options out there. 
So don't think I'm saying this is better than that. No one here says that except for Matt. Matt, Matt, he loves his freestyler. He likes going in programming and telling the light to do this, this, this. And again, Show Express, uh, uh, Chave Show Express, um, it is like that. You got to go in and program. Uh, you you know, basically, you got to kind of draw out a potato for the light to do things. And it, it's it's like anything else. There's a little bit of work, a little bit of learning curve, but it, it's, it's a fun stuff to do. And that, that's one of the things we all try to do. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Get the eye. These allergies. Yeah, I personally use yeah, I personally use sound switch because it works native with the mixing pro. It's yeah, it works native and it's supported by <laughs> and pro. that's the thing. We're, we're gonna see more and more AI kind of style stuff with boxes like that that come out that you basically press buttons, it has preloaded and it listens to the music, it's connected to the controller one way or another, or it has its own microphone that picks up the sound and says, Oh, you're at 130 BPM. Okay, the light should do this, 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 this. Um, my Asteras, the transmitter for the Asteras, um, it works with the software, and it actually has a microphone on it, and it'll actually read the BPM all the time. Uh, Mikey Mike says, hello, DJ Cool Thing. Um, oh, hey, DJ Mikey Mike. Thank you for the sound switch dongle. <laughs> there you go. And then, uh, Nathan, you wanted to say one more thing? Yeah, um, <clears throat> Cool Thing kind of was talking about there. <laughs> Um, do I, I don't necessarily, I can use sound switch without being yeah. connected to my controller, right? Oh, uh, yeah. The dongle has to be connected to the controller in order for it to work. If I just hook it to my computer and then run it into the controller. I don't think that's going to work unless you're using Serato virtual DJ or any of the uh, supported. I thought you could just go software. in and program and shows. Oh yeah. You, you just, uh, you just put the lights into sound switch and just save it to a thumb drive and then plug it in and it'll work. Okay. Cause like, if I, if like, if I, I'm trying not to set it up to where it works with music, I want to be able to do my own shows. Like I want to be able like, if, if the lights are doing something and I want, you know, the up lights to change to a certain color, I want to reach out and hit a button on the sound switch deal and make it switch to, um, you know, a certain color, or if I want, you know, like my washer bed Texas yeah. or something to change yeah. color. Yeah, you yeah. might want to get one of these. Yeah, the, yeah. It... Yeah, the control we'll one. Yeah, that one, what you're trying to do, that'll work perfectly with this one easier as opposed to yeah. trying to do it with a dongle or the other little box. Right. So that's, that's what I have coming. And then I'm guessing the dongle that I ordered, the $30 deal, was to program that. Is that correct? No. I don't think it's going to really do what you want without having to without having to go to like sound switch and actually hit the buttons. Yeah. If you got if you got one of these $30 ones, I'm thinking you got one of these and you yeah, don't got, got That's the one I got. You See, can this plug one, that in. you got a Denon. You can plug that into your Denon uh, you know, Prime controllers and it has built-in sound switch program. You just have to make sure you create your scenes and scenarios that you want into your music for that and it will automatically connect. Well, so how do I get the my fixtures from like the computer to the board? Is there a wire that goes like a USB from the cord to the control box? You have to yes. either use a wired DMX or do it wirelessly. Mm -hmm. So you have okay. to plug in your transmitter. So I would go from USB to what, like a DMX in, yeah. and then go yeah. out of that, go out of that with a DMX out. Um, yeah, that, that's basically what I do. Is I take a DMX cable, I plug it into my first line, then I take the second DMX cable, plug into the other lights, and I use the, the daisy uh, chain. I use a trans, a wireless transmitter coming out of your outs on your um, sound switch, and then okay. like with my Rockville lights, they have built in um. Wireless, so I don't need uh, like a receiver, but then on my other lights, I have to have a receiver, or or if I do it wired, I have to go wirelessly out to the end of the light and then out the end and daisy chain. Right. What I think that Nathan is asking is how does you connect that board to a computer? Is it a USB? Oh, well, yeah, to the board, or the board is independent? USB. USB, yeah, you've got to be able to program it, you know. You gotta so upload your scenes. Is a, a USB A? 
uh, uh, USB A or USB B? Uh, the regular, the regular USB. Yeah, the regular yes, yeah. So it's USB to what, like a printer? Uh, con uh, controller. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. The, the controller. Yeah, so the USB B. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. That's a whole like... lot of work. Yeah. That's <laughs> a whole... Now, now, after you get your things and stuff set, do you have to leave it connected to the computer, or does all that get stored in just the end of the little black controller, and then I can just uh, unplug it? Oh, uh, the controller is just it's like a MIDI controller. It doesn't yeah. do anything. It's, yeah. you, you just you, it's just like a regular DJ controller. Everything saved on your um on your computer. So okay, your so file is saved on your computer. The, okay, the software. Okay, so it has to be plugged into the computer to get to the uh, controller. Gotcha. So the controller is basically just a button yeah. instead of having to go on to the computer to do it. I got gotcha. you. It's a yep. like another controller. So Matt, Matt's got a cruise. And, I know. Uh, and I'm, just, I'm tired of talking about crappy ass sound switch. Sorry. <laughs> it's not crappy. Wait, hold on. Crappy. Just hold on. Woo! We're going to get off here. It's not crappy. Again, everyone likes to do different things. We it's know freestyle is the best. It takes a little bit of time to learn, but it's it's a solid program if you want to create it's your for, scenes. It's good for scenes. It's not good for quick triggers. Like, I play yeah. mine like a piano. So I'm hitting five, six, seven, eight different types of buttons all within two or three seconds. And it can't yep. do that. You have to, like, actually press <laughs> buttons. It's not... It's not a, it's not like a keyboard. So mm -hmm. it's, it's right. great for scenes. Well, I just wanted something so All I right. could get you doing that, you know, to kind of be a beginner. As I start getting more and more used to DMX and stuff, I will get a better software. But to start out, Any, this is, you know, probably anything something. Will help you. You. Anything will help you versus auto modes and show modes fire. Yeah, so. they always, always step up. Now, let's uh, let, let's end the show tonight on uh, a high note. So I'm going to actually have Jordan take us out tonight because I know how much he loves it and he, and he has fun doing it so Jordan say good night to everyone thanks for watching everybody and don't forget to like and subscribe have a good one good night Peace everyone out.